Hey everyone, and welcome to Mac Touch Plus. Today, I'm going to show you the finer points of Apple Remote Desktop and the features it provides in order to manage remote computers. Before we begin, you'll need to have two Macs. One of them is to run Remote Desktop and the other is to be managed remotely. First, on the Remote Mac that we're going to manage, open up System Preferences and select Sharing. The feature that we need to enable is Remote Management. This allows us to manage the Mac remotely in addition to screen sharing. You can limit remote access to a specific account, so you can set up a special administrator account with the sole purpose of allowing remote desktop access. This way, the account is only known to you and no one else who may have the administrator password for another account can access remotely. When we attempt to enable remote management, we're asked about the features we would like to use. Some of the features include being able to observe the Mac, generate reports, delete and replace items, and send messages. For the purposes of this tutorial, we want to enable all the features. Now, we could tick each feature that we want one by one, but if you're going to be doing this across a lot of Macs, this could be quite tedious. Instead, if you select the first option whilst holding down the Alt or Option key, it will tick all the boxes for you at the same time. That's our Remote Mac complete. I've now switched to our Remote Desktop Mac. This is what we're going to be accessing the other Mac from. When you first launch Remote Desktop, you're prompted to set up a password. This is to prevent any unauthorized access. The password can be stored in your keychain, so you don't need to type it in every time. A task server is basically an always on Mac that will have remote desktop running. This way, you're able to schedule tasks for the middle of the night without having to leave your own Mac on. This is very useful if you're using remote desktop primarily from a laptop computer. We're going to skip using a task server for today. We're also prompted for report collection. Each remote Mac can automatically generate a report on a regular basis. This way, if we ever need to run a report on one of the Macs, it's already generated and is a lot quicker. Again, we can just hit continue. Despite remote desktop's powerful capabilities, the actual interface is rather simple. We have options for screen sharing in the top left, where we can observe, control and curtain the display. To the right of the screen sharing buttons, we have options to copy and install files and packages, as well as send Unix commands. And to the far right, we have options to generate reports and spotlight individual computers. As you can see, Remote Desktop has automatically seen any available Macs on the network that have remote management enabled this one being the remote Mac I set up at the beginning. At the moment, we can find some basic information without needing to log in, but until we authorise our access to this computer, we've not really got much information. Select the computer and drag it to the All Computers column on the left hand side. Doing so will prompt for a username and password of an account on that computer. Enter the username and password of an administrator account and allow it to verify. You will be prompted if the password is incorrect. Once you've logged in and confirmed, you will see a small blue dot to the left hand side of the computer. This means we're logged in. In addition, you can also scan the entire local network, as well as a network range or network address, should you have a large network and you need to filter down. On the top right, you can also filter by computer name as well. All Computers contains every Mac that we've previously logged into that we have authorised. As you can see, now we've authorised access to this computer, we're given a lot more information in the information panel. So let's start with screen sharing. Select the Mac you're going to connect to and click Observe. This allows us to observe the display, but we cannot interact with it. If we try and click on any icons in the dock, we are unable to. 
To override control, you can select control instead of observe. This allows us now to interact with the computer as though we were there. We can click on icons and use the keyboard. Should we need to make changes to the Mac, but we need to prevent any user access, we can also curtain the display. If we type in a lock message after selecting the curtain icon and click OK, the remote computer is locked out, as you will see now. The remote Mac will display our message as well as who is logged in. You can disable curtain mode by clicking the curtain button again. Screen sharing is fairly self-explanatory, so let's explore some of the other options in Remote Desktop. In the toolbar, select Reports. From here, we can generate a system overview report, as well as some other predefined templates, such as USB devices, storage and software versions. You can toggle some of the options available. For example, you wouldn't necessarily need to know if Thunderbolt was present if all of your Macs are a few years old. The report can be run across many Macs, as many as you can connect to really. So instead of using it on one Mac like we're doing here, you may be wanting to run the report on say 150. The fewer options that you specify, the quicker the reports will be. When you're ready, select Get Report. As soon as the report is ready, it'll display on the screen. Here we can see many different options that we specified, such as monitor resolution, free disk space, and machine model. We can also narrow these by selecting some of the filters at the top. These reports are extremely useful if you're trying to look for any Macs that may need a software update, or are running out of memory. Next, let's look for a file on a remote Mac. Select your Mac and then click Spotlight. This allows us to run Spotlight remotely. Type in the name of a file or folder that you're looking for and the results will be populated below. Again, just like reports, you can specify as many Macs you'd like to run as possible by having them selected before you click on Spotlight. Additionally, you can specify folders. So here we're going to specify the Users folder. If a remote Mac contains a file that you desperately need, you can drag this to your desktop. As soon as you do this, you will be prompted with a file transfer box. This allows you to specify where and how to place the file. You may want to be able to overwrite any files that already exist. Remote Desktop allows you to transfer files to and from remote Macs extremely easily. You can even do so via screen sharing, or using the copy button in the main toolbar. Let's go back to screen sharing on our MacBook Pro. Here we're connected, and now I've realised I need to transfer this file back to this Mac. I simply drag the file onto remote desktop, just as I would in the Finder. We're then prompted if we'd like to send the file to the remote Mac. When you click Send, it will show you a transfer box. Now you can see we have that file in the folder. This is extremely useful if you're needing to copy a number of fonts or drivers or any particular pieces of files or software that your user may need. It's not limited to files and folders as well, we can also copy and paste clipboard content between remote Macs. I've just launched Notes, which contains a small text clip I could do with putting on this Mac. I'm going to open Stickies on the remote Mac and paste this text. Now with Remote Desktop, this isn't as simple as just copy and pasting using keyboard shortcuts. We have to interact with the remote clipboard with these two options here. We can get the remote clipboard contents, or we can send our own clipboard to the remote clipboard. 
I've selected send contents of my clipboard to the remote clipboard and effectively that sends our clipboard over to the remote Mac. If I select this text in stickies and select the reverse option, get the clipboard contents, here you can see I can paste it back. This can be a little confusing at first since we're so used to just copy and pasting using keyboard shortcuts or a menu. When you're dealing with a remote Mac using remote desktop, you need to take into account that the two Macs will have a separate clipboard. Similar to how we copied remote files from Spotlight, we can copy files to the remote Mac using the copy items. As well as selecting files that we'd like to copy, we can also select where we'd like to place them in. This can be the applications folder, the system fonts folder, or we can even specify an exact path. If an item already exists, we can tell Remote Desktop what to do, and we can also select on any options should there be any errors. I've just renamed the PDF I copied before, and dragged it to the top section under Items to Copy. I want to put this in the Remote User's Desktop. If I now observe, I can see the item on the desktop. Copying files allows you to copy applications over as well. However, what if an application needs to be installed? Many applications that require installation use package files. We can do this using Install Packages. First, we need a package file. So I've got a copy of iStat Server. Simply drag the package file to the packages list at the top. Select any options that you may need for installation and then click install. As soon as it's finished, Remote Desktop will let you know that it's succeeded. If I now connect to the remote Mac, I can see the package is installed and the software is now running. This is very useful if you ever need to install software remotely, as it can be the difference between making a trip to a remote computer or doing it from the comfort of your office. For the terminal savvy, you can send Unix commands and also see the responses. The first example is going to show us some basic information about where some Unix programs will run from. This is known as echo path, echo meaning just output. Once I run that, I then see the output that would have been shown on the remote Mac. Note that the remote Mac will not have terminal running, so this will be running in the background. A simpler example would be hostname. If we just type in hostname with no spaces and then hit send, this gives us the name of the computer on the network. We can also specify the name of the user that we want to use. For example, we can specify root. Let's try echo path again, and this time we'll select user as root. Again, we can see the command has run. Chances are, if you need to run some maintenance on a remote Mac, it's going to be in use. We can send a message or chat to the user on that computer, giving them a quick warning that we're going to need to make some changes. If you select send message, this just displays an alert on the computer. Here, I'm going to tell the user that their computer will be restarted shortly. If we hit send, we can now see on the remote Mac that the message has appeared. There's no option for the user to respond. All they can do is dismiss the message by clicking OK. Sometimes we'll need some information from the remote user, so instead of using message, we can use chat. This opens up a very basic chat box that provides two-way communication between you, the IT administrator, and the remote user. Once we send the message, the chat box will appear on the remote computer. Here, we can see the user is now able to respond. This is extremely useful for IT support, where you may need the user to make some changes themselves. Finally, under the Manage menu, 
we have some options to do some general maintenance to the Mac. This includes emptying the trash, opening up an application, or even remotely restarting or shutting down the Mac. In this instance, I'm going to log out the current user, and provided they have no changes to save, they will log out as though they clicked the logout button themselves. And that's our introduction to Apple Remote Desktop complete. If you'd like some more information on Apple Remote Desktop, please check out the footnotes of the tutorial. If you use Remote Desktop or would like to ask more questions, please use the comments below. Thanks for watching.